It's, uh, right now, though, I want to bring in the author of uh, Iconoclast, uh, Brian Dimitrovic. David Botson, he's also back with us as well. And first thing I want to ask you guys about, and I'll start with you, um, Brian, the shutdown, the impact of the shutdown. You know, today when, when, when uh, Jamie Dimon suggested that we could have zero growth in the first quarter, uh, you know, I kind of, I, I thought it was really reckless on his part to, to make that suggestion, uh, considering that all the work out there says that while there could, there will be an economic impact, it shouldn't be that dire. Sure. I mean, government spending is a component of gross domestic product. So I guess if it slows to something near a halt, we can have slow growth in the first quarter. But the thing is, that will rebound over abundantly in the second quarter. But the more important phenomenon is this. The more these federal workers are furloughed, the more they're going to get second jobs and enter into the gig economy. That means we could actually see a migration of the federal work workforce, at least a portion of it, into the real economy. Let me tell you, that will presage real growth in the future. David, you, uh, I saw a tweet from you uh, in L.A. Uh, you saying, listen, you know, the airport was pretty empty, pretty smooth. Uh, because we're hearing the horror stories, and the way it's being composed on the mainstream media is, how it's impacting or influencing regular folks, not on the economic side, because it's hard to make that argument, but that somehow we're all impacted in a negative way. Maybe we wait an extra half an hour to get on the plane. Yeah, so I have two kind of perspectives that I care about is what are Americans actually seeing and feeling, and then from an investor and market standpoint, what I don't care about is what they're saying on the Beltway and mainstream media's take on it. The first two, I think, find this to be a total non-event. There is no real impact taking place right now. Now, Brian's right, and I think this speaks to what Jamie Dimon said. There's a mathematical sense in which reduced government spending comes out of the input to GDP. Sure. So you just simply formulaically could have some number, and it just comes back around. It's hard to imagine it would dramatically offset no. uh, consumer spending, uh, business investment, and those other things. I don't things, think the so. consumer is even aware it's happening. I don't think the consumer cares one bit. The tweet you referenced, I was at LAX last night flying out to New York. It wasn't just that it wasn't bad. It was better than I've ever seen it. I've flown out to New York almost 300 times in the last 20 years. It was the least lines and commotion right. I've ever seen. I just think it's a much to do about Let me nothing. ask you about what I'm, one thing that bothers me, but I don't understand it, uh, the CLO, CLOs. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like every major economic crash we've had, uh, you know, throughout my time on Wall Street has been associated with the abuse of uh, some instrument, junk bonds, collateral collateralized debt obligations, those kind of things. CLO seems to be the sort of thing that I'm hearing about. There's a record amount of them done last year. It's a money-making thing, a can't-miss thing. Those raise red flags for me. Yeah, well, first of all, every crash that's happened in about 500 years has come down to some excess of debt some abuse of debt. So that you're exactly right. In the past, there's been spiraling junk bond excess. We know the mortgage story. CLOs are a bit different in that they don't have to be purchased by regular investors and levered up. The fact of the matter is there's just a lot more companies borrowing a lot more money, and this is a different instrument they're doing it through. The Fed put $4 trillion of liquidity into the economy right. post-financial crisis. How much is corporate debt, which includes CLOs, levered loans, high yield, how much has it gone up? $4 trillion. They wanted that reflation in the corporate economy, and they got it. I think that the proper stewardship of that money going forward is the question. There is not an excess of leverage in the economy really? right now, okay. but they're up against those limits, and that, and that is why they're so concerned about the Fed pulling away the punch bowl. Brian, I just want to get from you, as, as the market has given up about 100 points in the last 20 minutes, you, what are your, what's the biggest concern that's, that you think uh, face uh, our economy and the stock market this year? I think the stock market will not like some kind of end to gridlock. If there's a big party in Washington about spending, I mean, the market's really going to pull back. If we're not going to have future tax cuts and deregulation like we had back in 2017, the market's going to second guess why it increased 25 percent over 26, 2017. Shrinking government in the long term is what the stock market is going to love. I can tell you right now, it's done very well so far on the shutdown. In fact, the last time it went down on the shutdown was 1990. Uh, gentlemen, thank you both very much. Always a great conversation. Brian and David.